what is going on with Utah and who told them that they're the bell of the ball. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Locked on Baylor. I am Drake Toll from Alaska. Thank you for making Locked on Baylor your first listen every single day. Two things. One, very soon I'll be announcing new big career news. Hooray. Uh, Number two, I'm wearing a hat today because apparently, according to the – you know, I just read my YouTube comments for the first time in a long time, and a lot of these dissenters apparently don't like my hair for some reason. So you win. You win today. You know who doesn't win, though? It's Utah. Dude, what is going on with them? I, a week ago, I wouldn't have been this opinionated on this topic. I wouldn't have cared about Utah. If you just said, Drake, what do you think about Utah going to the Big 12? I would have told you I think it's a good. It's a good thing because, you know, it's a decent brand. They've been to some New Year's Six Bowls. They've won the Pac-12. They are the, they're the best football program in the, back, in the Pac-12 the last couple of years. There you go. Kind of tough to argue that, right? So why wouldn't I want them? Why wouldn't people want Utah in this conference makes perfect sense except that for some reason utah is is the person who doesn't want them in this conference i don't know what's going on i don't know what's going on it's it's like when the so i I make the titanic reference a lot it's like the conductor of the titanic the the captain whatever you will he goes down with the ship you're like all right yeah sure I get it. You know, you're George Klyovkov. Klyovkov has to go down with the ship, right? He is on the Titanic squarely. He's with the band, you know, Oregon State and Washington State are making up the band and they're singing. Somebody make that video. It'd be awesome. But then Utah is like that random rich woman where it's like women and children first, women and children first. And for some reason, you know, she's got a pass to go on the lifeboat. Like, we're good. You can go on the lifeboat. No, she won't do it. She is... She's strictly anti-lifeboat. And you know why she is? Because the prettier woman who's got more money just got on the same lifeboat. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the fact that BYU, the big show in town, the prettier woman with more money got on the lifeboat. And so Utah, to effectively end its own run of Power 5 prowess in college football is denying itself the open spot on the Big 12 lifeboat because BYU is already on it. How petty do you have to be? And here's the thing. It's not just the fans. The fans are already have been fairly insufferable on social media, as I have learned in the last couple of weeks, as they continue to come out and say things like, oh, you know, there's no way we would go to the Big 12. The Pac-12 is still fine, even in the wake of Colorado leaving. You know what I keep, I keep hearing that? I keep hearing it from Utah fans. Oh, congrats. You got the worst football team in the Pac-12, which I guess from a record standpoint is true. But that's Utah's sentiment, is that the Big 12 is still worse than the Pac-12 with Colorado, even with USC and UCLA jumping ship. And it again, it's not just the fans. Uh, Tim Fitzgerald, who I like a lot, tweeted out, it was a quote from Ian Fitzsimmons, who said on Sirius XM College Sports Radio, that Utah is not returning the Big 12's phone calls, that basically the Big 12 has said, hey, look, buddy, we're looking at about 14 teams or so here. Uh, what do you say you do it? What do you say you come on and, and join this conference? And Utah is saying no. I, again, I, I don't know how many more teams the Big 12 is going to get. It seems like the cutoffs around 14 and, you know, maybe there's a chance that Brett Yormark takes, takes a chance and goes with 16, but everybody should be lobbying for the last lottery ticket to make it in, into the big 12. If you're Oregon, if you're Washington, if you're already getting the big X pretty much from the big 10 or the not right now, the stop sign from the big 10, then your best shot is to go to the Big 12. So why, of all of the schools in the Pac-12, when you're hearing the interest of Arizona, who is very likely in the next few days to make a a trek to this conference, when you're hearing about Arizona, when you're hearing about even even UConn, right, who has just won a national championship in basketball, they have a legitimate interest to go to the Big 12. Why is Utah on a high horse to say no? 
and I, I, I can't. Somebody commented. I, I told you I just read the YouTube comments for the first time in a while, and somebody commented, "Oh, you know, you're an idiot moron," which I think is funny. My mom reads those, by the way. She sees that stuff. It bothers her a lot more than it bothers me. I don't even read it. But somebody said you're an idiot moron, and and uh, you know, think about if it was Baylor TCU. If you're such a homer, like if Baylor and TCU had split conferences, no way Baylor would follow them. They would see it, you know, it'd be too petty. My brother, what? If if we go back two years ago and the Big 12's falling apart entirely, and TCU decided to go to the Pac-12, right? Baylor fans at one point were begging to go to the Pac-12, thinking the Big 12 was going to die. Had TCU gotten an invite to the Pac-12 and accepted it? And then Baylor had gotten an invite. I could tell you what I wouldn't be saying. Oh, no. Baylor can't follow TCU's footsteps and make more money and survive in the Power Five. I, I am just dumbfounded right now that the, the Utah fans think that following BYU to where the money is would somehow make them less prominent in college, right, right? Following the bigger brand, following the team that is that's better than you historically, is somehow a a bad thing. I get it. Maybe you're telling the college world that you're not as good as BYU, or that you have to follow them into whatever is next. But to be honest, it's kind of how it is. They're they're not the same. BYU is the bigger brand in the state of Utah, despite Utah being literally called Utah. Ha! And still getting around that. So if you're going to, if you as a school, as a fan base, are going to take Petty to the grave, be my guest. Be my guest. Because guess what? The, and, and here's your clip. The Big 12 does not need Utah. And right now, based on what George Klyovkov has put in front of the Pac-12 as a, quote, TV deal, which is idiotic, the U- Utah needs the Big 12. The Big 12 doesn't need Utah. Why are they being this way? Why are they not returning the phone calls? Why are they not the ones making the phone calls? Why are the fans like, oh, we're happy in the Pac-12. We're happy sinking on this ship. How? How does that register in your brains and make any sense? It 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 isn't logical. It's not how business works. You can't attach yourself. That's why people file for bankruptcy to get out of the hole. They don't keep digging the hole. They don't stick with it and ride it all the way down. It's not how this goes. Big Twelve doesn't need Utah. Utah needs the Big Twelve. The Big Twelve's got other people calling, and I think at this point they're happy with the team that just won a national championship in UConn. And I'll get into that. My top five non-Pac-12 candidates coming up later. I just don't think. I actually I know that Utah does not matter as much as Utah thinks it does. And we can all go on living our happy Big Twelve lives in a future Power Three conference without Utah, and be okay. And Utah can go back to the Mountain West, and I'll be okay with that. I don't get where all of this is coming from, where Utah thought that it got so big and bad because it's not. Baylor didn't play this game. TCU didn't play this game. Oklahoma State and Texas Tech, beggars can't be choosers. And when it looked like the Big 12 was falling apart, the biggest brands that were left outside of Oklahoma and Texas didn't come out and say, ah, we'd never go to a different conference. They didn't play holier than thou. We said, we'll take what we can get. And we hope it's something good. And now... It's become a power three. It's awesome. You know what else is awesome? Watching Locked On Baylor, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And what's even more awesome is eBay Motors. I. What's your favorite kind of motors? Because hmm? mine is eBay Motors. What does eBay do? eBay Motors. And it motors its way into keeping my 96 Impala running. People have been asking me. Again, I read the YouTube comments for the first time. Somebody asked me why I'm in Alaska. I'm working for a baseball team called the Anchorage Bucks. BYU player in the league, Cooper Vest. Utah player in the league, uh, Caden Carpenter. How neat is that? So I've seen those guys play baseball. And in the meantime, I've been driving two and fro games in my 96 Impala, which is totaled. But I have replaced half the parts with eBay Motors. It's just like sports. 
championship teams are about having the right fit. And it's the exact same with your car. You want the right fit. So next time you need parts or accessories, go to eBay Motors. eBay has a guaranteed fit. You put in, you put in what your car is. You tell them, you know, my car is a 96 Impala. And it's it's the first time around they get you parts that fit. That, that you know that this is going to fit what your car is. Or you get your money back. And just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. You can be confident in eBay Motors. Over 122 million parts. I can't even count that high to choose from. You'll be back in you'll be back in the game in no time. Guaranteed. It's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, the right prices. eBayMotors.com. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay's guaranteed fit is only available in the United States. Eligible items only. And terms and conditions do apply. All right. Pac-12 TV, TV deal. So I uh, was watching some 365 sports, as I'm known to do. And I saw Jason Shear on there, who I've grown to like. Jason Shear, 24-7 sports, covers Arizona, will be a Big 12 writer very soon. Wink, wink. It's coming, right? I feel like we all have accepted that Arizona is going to be in this conference. And what he is deduced from his source, Jason Shear, that is, oh boy, is that when the Pac-12 meets with the remaining member institutions, the four of them, and presents a TV deal, it is going to be laughed at. Oregon and Washington are going to see it, and it's going to be laughed at. They're going to jump ship immediately. I don't. I don't know if there's been a time in history where someone has called the like a board of directors meeting or a trustees meeting just to push the trustees away or ensure the death of something. That's why Klyovkov has pushed this thing off so long, right? He has tried to make sure that, ha, it's coming. The TV deal's coming. And the more we wait, the better it gets, which makes no sense, by the way. Uh, and now what Shear has deduced from his spot, from his sources is that each team will make around $20 million. Do you understand how little, how little money that is in college athletics? $20 million. It is, it's dumbfounding that that, like, it almost sounds like a joke, a joke of a number. You're looking at half-ish, a little more than half of the Big 12. The conference that your closest competitor right now, the one that you're trying to beat in this whole deal, twenty million dollars. What a joke that would be. Do you think? Do you think that Colorado left this conference just for Oregon and Washington to go? Oh, I wish that was me. I'm going to sit here and take my twenty million dollar lumps and go home. No, not how it works. Do I think that Col that? Washington and Oregon are locks to follow Colorado to the Big 12? No. No. They're on my wish list. They're the top two on my wish list, Washington and Oregon. Do I think it's going to happen? I don't know. I, you know, they got a good shot at going to the Big 10, I think. I, I, I know what everybody's been saying. I know what I've been saying, that the Big 10's closed for business. And it might be for a little bit, but Oregon and Washington, that's where they want to be. It's the Big 10. Oh. And they're going to have to. When $20 million is slapped in their face. And what's worse is heavy streaming. Heavy streaming and escalators is what Shear said. The the heavy streaming part, bad still, right? You're 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 trying for the Apple thing. You're like, oh, give me Apple. And what's gonna blow up in your face is when Washington State plays Cal and no one watches the game and no one pays to see the game. I I have a really good I have a really good just inkling that it's gonna fail, especially on an escalator. When oh yeah, you know. Hey, George Klyovkov sitting around the table. Hey, you know, we could get more money for these streaming deals the more viewers we get. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. Because the numbers are going to suck. No one's going to watch that product. No one's been turning on Pac-12 at dark, at night, whatever it was. It bombed because the quality in the conference was not good enough. The Big 12, you could make a similar case in some areas. I, 
I mean, the, the thing, the weird thing is the offense was good enough that people were still watching the Texas Tech versus TCU games like five years ago. Even as, as irrelevant as it kind of seemed across college athletics, people were still watching it because like, oh, well, let's watch 70 points be scored. Ah, ha, ha. And so you had that aspect of the Big 12, but there's still some matchups. Kansas, West Virginia, nobody wants to watch that. Thank God Kansas, West Virginia is not streaming on Apple TV with an escalator that, oh, yeah, the more viewers you get, the more you get paid. Like, great. I would love to make commissions in a town where there are no businesses to make sales to. If I have, if I have great commission, you know, yeah, you get 50% commission, 50% commission. But also nobody's going to buy the product. Again, I, not how business works. I've been graduated from college for two months and I didn't take a single business class, but I know it doesn't work like that. I know you can't set down your shareholders. The only people you have left, your presidents, and say, ha, ah, look what I did. Look what, we, look what we waited so long for, like I told you we would. It's $20 million. It's $20 million. And uh, escalator, though, because it could be more. Which is, you know, in effect, what Florida State was looking for was the escalator, in a sense. It's like, oh, yeah, we should have the ability to go up. Oh, which makes sense. When your product can go up, it can't in the Pac-12, man. It can't. There are like three, maybe four games when ESPN and Fox, when they draft out these games with who that, you know, who's going to get this, who's going to get that, who wants this one. Without USC and UCLA, the Pac-12 has almost nothing, almost nothing that people want to watch. And I'm not saying the Big 12 is a much better, a crazy better product because you have the Kansas and West Virginia games. But man. The Big 12 is a lot more competitive top to bottom than the Pac-12. And the bigger part of this, the Big 12 is not going to Apple TV or the CW. The Big 12 has games on FS1. They do. They put some crappy games on FS1. And guess what? People don't really watch them. But that's just kind of the nature of this deal. The good thing is the bulk of the games, the big games in the Big 12, go on ESPN or Fox. That's good. Where did the good games in the Pac-12 go? They die. Nobody's watching them. Because there's nowhere good to watch them. And still nobody's paying for it. This whole Pac-12 TV deal, it's just ensuring. It's ensuring that Washington and Oregon leave. That Arizona State. That Utah. They try to jump ship. Like Somebody's going to have to force Utah to go to the Big 12, it seems. And leave it to George Klyovkov to do it. That's where we're headed. Who are the top five teams outside of that, outside of that little Pac-12 bubble pod that are going to the Big 12? Boy, I like this five. On Locked On Baylor, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Number five on my list of expansion teams to the Big 12 outside of the Pac-12, UConn. I love it. I love it. Do I think UConn is better than... Arizona? No, of course not. Football is definitely not good enough. The the non-revenue sports, you're looking at UConn, you're going, ah, <laughs> great women's basketball, great men's basketball. Bingo. That's your selling point on UConn. They're number five outside the Pac-12 right now because they just won a national championship. Still not as good as Arizona because Arizona's got basketball that's pretty much on par with UConn and kind of better football. Is UConn better than Washington? Of course not. Oregon, definitely not. But it's number five non-Pac-12 because it makes sense. All five of these are going to make sense. You're going to look at them and you're going, ah, could see it. Maybe not the first two. You might gawk at the first two. Number five, UConn. Number four, Pitt. A team that I didn't reference yesterday that could legitimately be a great fit in the Big 12. I didn't talk a lot about the ACC, ACC schools going up the coast. I spent a lot of time on Miami and Florida State and Clemson and Virginia, Virginia Tech and UNC, NC State, Wake Forest. I didn't go to Louisville, who's not on this list. I didn't go to Syracuse, not on this list. I didn't go to Pitt, is on this list at number four. Love the rivalry with West Virginia. One of my favorite rivalries in college athletics. I think Pitt adds enough in basketball, enough in football. Is it great? No, of course not. It's not spectacular. You know, nobody's lauding over Pitt. Nobody's going nuts, but I like it. It's serviceable. It's better than UConn. It's better than UConn. 
I, I, yes, bring me Heinz Field, which is renamed to whatever stupid name it is now. I like Pitt at four. Number three, and this one feels real realistic, guys. When Florida State makes that jump out of the ACC and all hell breaks loose there, there are going to be some nice teams sitting around. When the ACC falls apart, some nice teams sitting around looking for a conference. Three, Virginia Tech. I don't think, I don't think that Virginia Tech is going to find a spot in the Big Ten. I know they're not going to the SEC. When the Big Ten circles its four or five schools out of the ACC for expansion, there's a world in which Virginia Tech is not a part of it. And that's when I want them in the Big 12. Pretty good basketball, yeah. Pretty good football, sure. Storied program, you know. They've had some greats recently. You go your Beamer years. You go Mike Vick, Virginia Tech. You had the, what is it, Enter Sandman. Right. There's there's Blacksburg's cool. I I think it's a good fit along with like a pit, a West Virginia in the Big 12. I would be happy, happy to see Virginia Tech in the Big 12. Number two. And you might you might think I'm crazy. Virginia. Yeah, I know. Academically doesn't really fit in the Big 12. The Big 12 is not really valuing academics like the Pac-12 claims to. Or like the Big Ten does. The SEC doesn't either. But Virginia's not going to the SEC. No. Their only shot is in the Big Ten. And here's why I think the Big 12 has a a ploy to get Virginia. The Big Ten, they're going to take Notre Dame. Notre Dame's not going to the SEC. There's a realm in which the Big Ten goes and tries to get a Duke for basketball. The Big Ten seems like a good fit for a Boston College, for a Syracuse. These teams that we feel like are kind of left behind in the in the ACC, a few of them would fit all right in the Big Ten. And what's more, what's a better case, even better case for Virginia in the Big 12, is that what if the Big Ten only goes hunting for two teams or four teams, and those teams end up being, they, they jump out in front of the SEC and they get Florida State. And the Big Ten gets, say they bring in Pitt. And then say that the Big Ten's like, all right, now we want UNC. And Notre Dame, we're closed. Well, now Clemson go to, goes to the SEC. What, is, what does Virginia do? Well, they go to the Big 12. I don't think we're that far from that. I really don't think we're that far from that. Would they be, you know, tip their nose up to us? Yeah, probably. Great basketball. What's your football done for me lately? Nothing. Nothing. Virginia has no reason to be cocky in football, which is the money winner, the the breadwinner, the money maker. I think Virginia is my number two, and they're realistic. Number one, for a very similar reason, UNC Tar Heels. Great fit. Great fit in the Big 12. I think it's super reasonable for very similar reasons. The the SEC, not taking UNC. Don't see them taking UNC. Football, up years and down years, roller coaster, fun team, very Big 12-like. I am... I'm of the mind that the Big Ten goes out and they say, all right, we want Notre Dame. All right, we want Virginia. All right, we want Boston College, and we want Duke. All right, sweet. There's your four. And the SEC says, okay, we want Florida State, Miami, and Clemson. All right, there's your three, your four, however many you want. And then North Carolina kind of gets left out of that mix. For this, It's the same reason Virginia. It's just there are teams that are going to be left out of the mix here. When the ACC falls apart, I don't know if every big team's going to find a home. And that's exactly what's happening to Oregon. Before you say, like, oh, there's no way that would happen, it's exactly what's happening to Oregon and Washington right now. Big teams who have been waiting through, kind of on hold for one conference, letting things play out a little bit, and we're in a dangerous spot where if the Big 12 only takes 14, Oregon and Washington get left in the Pac-12 out to dry. Because the Big Ten's not going to take them right now. You, I would hate to be in that position. I think North Carolina and Virginia might be the Oregon and Washington of the ACC. They just kind of get stuck in the middle of this. And when they're left behind, who's going to be there? Come to Papa. It's the Big 12, man. It's the Big 12. That's my five. UConn, five. National champions, bring them on. Pitt, four. West Virginia rivalry, very fun. I like Pitt, big city. Virginia Tech, three. Blacksburg's cool. I've been there. Pretty neat. Storied football program. Two, Virginia. Great academics. Great basketball. Great baseball. Just again, feels kind of Big 12-y. Football feels very Big 12-y. Number one, North Carolina. 
spectacular basketball football up and down like the big 12, but very entertaining, spectacular baseball. North Carolina would be a stellar fit in the big 12. You'd be a stellar fit listening to this show every day. And I want to thank you for doing that, for starting every day with Locked On Baylor, making it your first listen every single day. This has been Locked On Baylor. J.D. Piquel joins us on Wednesday. Uh, come back, yeah, tomorrow, Wednesday. I'm Drake Toll from Alaska. This has been Locked On. Do thank you for listening. Comment something nice, huh? Baylor. My hair's not that bad, right? <laughs>